Beaver, and uh, we're going to have Dan put his uh, prognostication hat on as we uh, head down to Texas, which is, uh, again, a mile-and-a-half cookie cutter, if you will. And uh, I think this is a track, you know, we saw this a couple of years ago that Jimmy Johnson had a little trouble with this racetrack. And... Um, I think he more had a little trouble with Sam Hornish, if I recall right. Well, I think it was the racetrack. I wouldn't go messing with Sam. <laughs> Sam's from Defiance, Ohio. Yeah, so. yeah, okay. But anyhow, um, Dan, let it give us an idea of uh, of who you like, uh, who your ABC guys are in this uh, for this particular race, and and who you would pick in this deal. Oh uh, well, my my hat is not nearly as stylish as the one uh, worn by the owner for the my top three picks, but I think you got to go with the. The, the Roush Kateers and the Cat in the Hat. They've been good here overall. Uh, this is one of the best, if not the best, tracks for each of the, uh, the for the top two drivers, for Kenseth and Biffle. Uh, Edwards, uh, a little bit further down the order, but, but he's been strong as well. I, I would vote a straight Roush ticket this week and uh, have all three of them on my provisional roster, uh, something I put in the NASCAR Fantasy Live game. If I can swing it, probably will have all three of them in that game as well. Kenseth and Biffle combined have eight straight top five finishes, have won two of the last four, and have an average finish of somewhere around third, I believe. Uh, Kenseth is a little bit stronger overall if you go back further. Uh, he's got uh, his two victories have come since 2002, and he's finished second or third in about uh, six, seven races um, in that frame of time. So even though he hasn't, he, he's been a little lackluster during the chase, he does have those two victories at Talladega and at Kansas, and he's he's my top pick this week. Is this a, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, is this a racetrack where uh, if we're going to get a win for, out of the 99, this is, this is the racetrack he's going to do it. He might pull out. All the stops and and you know try and salvage what little bit of a season we could get for Carl Edwards. Absolutely, he's got nothing to lose, and that that got to be good or bad. The best thing about him this week is he's only on about seven percent of the Yahoo fantasy rosters, and he's probably just as unpopular in any other fantasy game out there. If he actually pulls it off. He's going to help you make up a ton of ground if uh, one of the other top drivers stumbles. And I'm not told on Johnson or Keselowski particularly this week. Uh, I think both of them are going to be looking over their shoulders. I'm not sure that you can make Keselowski race conservatively, but this is not a good track for him. Uh, his best, he's got one top 15 finish, I think, in eight starts. Uh, or He's got one top 15, top 15 finish, yeah, it's eight starts. Uh, and this is not going to be one of his better courses. I think he'll still finish in the top ten, and Johnson's going to race to his level. So both of those drivers are going to finish in the high single digits or low teens, and that's going to be a good opportunity to make up some ground if you bet against them. Is this the race that uh, those two guys are going to be the most conservative at with three to go? This, this is the race you just kind of have to get through, don't want to give up a whole lot of points to the other guy, and then – let the chips fall where they may in the last two races? Maybe. Uh, I think you've got more to lose here. And by the time you get to Homestead, you know exactly what it is you have to do. Right. Uh, if you're leading, you have to finish a, ahead of the driver that's following you. If you're following, you got to finish far enough ahead uh, you, that, that you can overtake him. Phoenix is not a wild card, but a little bit more of a wild card because of the recent repaving. Uh, it's a, it's a one-mile track, which makes it really a short track. It's a tough track. Uh, people do hit the wall there from time to time, but they don't hit the wall so hard that they usually have to retire. So the consequences at Texas are much greater than they're going to be for the final two races. Uh, by the time you get to Homestead, if, you, if something happens to you at Homestead, you're done. But you don't have to worry about it any longer. So you're going to go all out there regardless. Uh, and I don't think that either... Johnson or Keselowski are going to get to Homestead and be allowed to be conservative. One reason Homestead's not a good track statistically for Johnson is he's never had to race there. He comes in there usually needing a 10th place finish or an 8th place finish, 
and he just keeps an eye on his competitor. It's going to be this year. That'll be interesting to see exactly how he has to, uh, exactly what he's capable of doing there, because he's probably going to have to to race his best in order to to, to have a shot at winning the, the championship. So yeah, I think we've got an interesting three weeks ahead of us. We've got about two minutes to go, Dan. Uh, real quickly, what do you look at uh, in the C drivers for Yahoo at, at Texas? Does anybody jump out at you there that uh, that we haven't talked about up till now this year? Bain jumps out still. Uh, 17th place finishes in his first three starts. Didn't translate into a good finish this spring, but you know, you know, the, there are always going to be those kind of outlying stats. So. If you're if you're like me and you're down to two more starts with uh, Hornish, this is the week I'm probably going to park him, start someone like Bain, and uh, hope that he finishes in the top 20, and then hope that Hornish actually has a good scene, and he should. Uh, he's race, he won there a couple of years back in the Nationwide Series, and uh, that he has a good homestead, and that I get those three picks right. So. If you've only got one Hornish, then you probably would want to start him at Phoenix. You'd want to start Bain this week. And I don't know that he's going to be there, but I suspect someone like Ricky Stenhouse probably will show up for the final race uh, and to get a head start on next year, and, and he'd be a good start there. Stenhouse has been sporting this black Stetson cowboy hat since uh, Chicago. to kind of, I think it's kind of to give you a shot at... Uh, and Austin Dillon, so maybe he's going to show up at Texas, too. Who knows? He's Dan Beaver, uh, fantasy sports, uh, fantasy NASCAR racing writer for NASCAR.com and YahooSports.com. Dan, thanks for spending some extra time with us this week to talk about Texas and talk about the three races remaining in the in the Sprint Cup season. We'll talk to you again right before Homestead, and, uh, and uh, you can walk everybody into their championship for their leagues. I look forward to it and, hope, and uh, might have a little something to tell you guys before then even. So. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit today. If you do, let me know, and, and maybe we'll get you on early. We'll talk about that because I'd like to uh, like to expand on that a little bit when we get a chance. Sounds good. We'll be, cr- right. we'll be cryptic until All then. All right. Thanks, All right. Dan. Yeah, thanks, Appreciate Dan. it. Dan Beaver, follow him on Twitter, at Fantasy Race. Uh, read all of his fantasy racing articles at NASCAR.com and YahooSports.com and listen to the highlights of these two interviews at uh, On Pit Road, uh, Vent Racing with Steve and Charlie blog, On Pit Row, and uh, we'll have them in our newsletter this week. So if you haven't subscribed to that, you should uh, go to either our Facebook page or the OnPitRow.com and subscribe to our newsletter and listen to all these cool things that we put out every week. You got your lab coat on. You got anything for eczema? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me bite your hand off. Oh, no, I asked you when we came back from the from